Hey, I'm Dr. Jason Barker with the Natural Athletes Clinic, and today I'm going to talk about some important blood tests that you need to get done to make sure that you are not anemic. And I'm talking about iron deficiency anemia. This is a very common cause for poor performance in a lot of athletes. Who's most at risk for iron deficiency anemia? Well, women are primarily due to menstruation, so regular loss of blood. Um, you're at risk if you're vegan or vegetarian. Some people are just poor absorbers of iron. Everybody's got a biochemical individuality, so maybe you don't absorb iron as well as the next person does. You can lose iron regularly through GI associated blood loss. So if you uh, are a runner or a kayaker or a mountain biker, if your guts get rattled around a lot, you can actually lose a little bit of blood that way. That's a normal thing. It's real. You can lose iron through sweat. You can lose it through urine. You can lose iron through something called foot strike hemolysis. And this is from repetitive pounding of the feet. Primarily what happens to runners. You lose red blood cells that way. They get destroyed and you lose iron. So now what are the symptoms of iron deficiency anemia? Well, there's a lot of them, right? So fatigue, pallor, that's pale skin, uh, palpitations, funny heartbeats, shortness of breath, headaches, anxiety, uh, glossitis, that's swelling of the tongue, um, something called angular chelitis, that's cracking around the mouth, and even restless leg syndrome can be a symptom of this. And another one that's uh, very well correlated with iron deficiency anemia is a craving ice chips or wanting to chew on ice all the time. So if you're a big ice chewer, you need to get a blood test and make sure that you're not actually iron deficient anemic because that happens as well too. So blood tests, what needs to happen with this? Well, I get a lot of female athletes in clinic who have just had a CBC. So this is complete blood count. It measures hematocrit and hemoglobin. Hematocrit is a count of how many red blood cells you have. If they've got a decent count and they've got decent amounts of hemoglobin, the doctor will say, well, yeah, you're not anemic. We don't know what's wrong with you. So then they come and see me. They have all these symptoms of anemia and they didn't do an iron panel or more importantly, a ferritin. Okay. So the ferritin is the clincher on this one. And ferritin is a protein in your bloodstream. And when we're using it to look at iron stores, you can kind of think of ferritin as a storage form of iron. So we want for a regular range of ferritin is anywhere from 12 to around 100. If you are a female athlete, you need your ferritin to be at least 50. Anything lower than that, and you are definitely compromising your performance. Now, I really want to get this point across because there's a lot of studies that looked at female athletes who had a normal CBC and a normal hematocrit, and they were diagnosed as not anemic, yet they had the symptoms of anemia, fatigue, palpitation, shortness of breath, all that stuff. They had poor performance, yet when they measured their ferritin, they had very low ferritin levels down in the teens or low 20s. And then when they supplemented this group of women with iron, guess what? They felt better, the ferritin came up, and their symptoms went away. So this is why it's so important to get that ferritin done. Now, you need to get this measured every six months if you're a female athlete because once you slip down into that anemic hole, it takes several weeks, if not months, to come up out of that. So you don't want to lose a chance to monitor your iron levels so that you can stay on the top of your game. So every six months, CBC, iron panel, and a ferritin. Now, don't um, stop this video and then go out and just start taking iron. That's not a good idea. You really need to know what your blood levels are. Iron is something that has a very narrow therapeutic window. So some is good. That doesn't mean that more is better. In fact, more can be very dangerous and not good for your body. So make sure that you don't go and just take iron after watching this video, get some blood tests done. Make sure you get that ferritin. By the way, like a CBC, an iron panel of ferritin is probably going to cost you 30 bucks. So there's no reason your doctor can't order it for you through your insurance or even you get it done out of pocket. Now, the last thing I'll say is that if you do supplement with iron, make sure you do take it with a vitamin C. Vitamin C is going to help transform that non-heme iron that comes in iron supplements into a better absorbed form so that you're going to have more success supplementing with that, okay? So make sure you get those blood tests done every six months. Yes, you need to be meticulous about this if you want to stay at the top of your game. Make sure you get that ferritin done and make sure that you use vitamin C when you do supplement with iron if you need to, okay? Hope this helps you guys out. If you did, please give this video a like and I'll see you next time.